Hi, my name is Tim Tetrick. I'm a technical solution professional uh, with Microsoft and just want to spend uh, a few minutes talking through the archiving story with Office 365. So I get a lot of questions from partners and customers confused about um, the archiving story with Office 365 and really wanting to understand the different features and capabilities uh, in the service. So I want to spend some time walking through and talking through the capabilities and also do to show a demonstration of the capabilities of archiving. So first off, uh, I just want to refer to this table uh, available in the uh, Exchange Online Service description. So you could get to this by going out to Bing and searching for Office 365 Service Descriptions and you'll find the Exchange Online Service Description there. It has a lot of great information on uh, all the different services within Office 365. So specifically, um, it has this nice little table that looks at the different features and capabilities across the different plans of Office 365. A couple that I want to talk about and highlight uh, the first one uh, is the personal archive. So some of you may have heard of this. Um, the personal archive is really like a, an additional um, storage archive within Exchange Online and Office 365. You can think of it kind of like a PST file in the cloud. So it's stored up in the cloud, it's backed up and secure, it also travels with you um, whether you're on Outlook or Outlook web app. Um, so it's just an additional storage capability. You can see here comes available uh, as part of Exchange Online Plan 1 and Plan 2. Uh, Exchange Online also includes uh, multi-mailbox search capabilities and you can see these capabilities across all the different uh, plans, Kiosk, Plan 1, Plan 2, um, the ability to do multi-mailbox search or e-discovery of items across all those different kinds of mailboxes. And finally, I uh, want to talk about legal holder. You also see it referred to as litigation hold. This is only available in Exchange Online Plan 2. And what legal hold is, um, you know, again, I can certainly do a multi mailbox search, search across all the current items in, in my user's mailboxes. But if I want to um, uh, get compliance archiving, or also called immutable archiving, I'm going to have to turn on legal hold. So legal hold allows me to get um, the capabilities to preserve users deleted and edited mailbox items. So that can include email messages, appointments, tasks, etc. from both their primary mailbox and their personal archive. So with legal hold turned on I can be sure that any items are discoverable. Even if they, again, they've been deleted or edited, I can still make sure that I have access to those items. Again, a, a, a real um, immutable archive or compliance archive is available only with Exchange Online Plan 2. Uh, now, just as another option, just so uh, you are aware, some people will also prefer to do um, compliance archiving via journaling and journal out to a third party uh, archive that can be an on-prem archive, a cloud-based archive. That capability is also available um, across all the different subscription types that we looked at above here. So all subscriptions include organizational-wide capabilities such as journaling. So that is an alternative option to journal out to a third-party archive as well. Okay, now I uh, just want to spend a little time demonstrating and talking through personal archive, multi-mailbox search, legal hold, <clears throat> and just show you what it looks like um, uh, to actually enable those capabilities, to use those capabilities, uh, etc. So let's hop over to uh, our Office 365 uh, admin portal um, so I can get in to start configuring those capabilities via the uh, Exchange Control Panel. So let's launch that. So first off, um, if I go in under uh, Users and Groups, Mailboxes, I'll see all of my uh, user mailboxes in my organization. Um, so I can go in uh, and select a mailbox. I can go into Details here. Lots of different things I can do uh, within this uh, uh, within this capability. Again, we want to focus here uh, under Mailbox Features. We'll see uh, Archive, which is that personal archive we just talked about. And also we see litigation hold, again also referred to as legal hold, same thing. Um, so by default you'll see the personal archive and, the litig and litigation hold or legal hold are both disabled um, uh, when a new mailbox is created. 
Um, so I'm going to need to go in if I want to turn these on and turn these on. I can do this either through the exchange control panel that we're looking at here, or I can also do it via PowerShell. <clears throat> so if I go in here, I can, again, enable the personal archive. Um, I also have uh, an option here, if we go and enable this, an option here to name the personal archive if I want to. By default, it just shows up as archive mailbox dash username. Um, and I also will, uh, can go in here and enable litigation hold. So if I choose to go in and do that, turn on litigation hold, have a couple options here. Uh, one of those is that I can set up a, a note. So if I want to um, notify the user that their mailbox is, is being, uh, litigation hold is being turned on their mailbox, I can do that here. If they're using Outlook 2010, it'll actually show up in the mailbox. Um, I can also um, have a URL show up as well if I want to direct them to more information about, you know, maybe why I'm putting their mailbox on litigation hold. So I can do that here. I could obviously send them an email or maybe I don't want them to know about it and I don't have to worry about notifying them at all. Okay, so once uh, uh, personal archive litigation hold has been turned on, again, I'm going to start capturing with litigation hold turned on, I'm going to start capturing all those mailbox items. Again, even if users have deleted or edited items, I'm still going to capture those uh, to be available via multi-mailbox search. So now let's look at multi-mailbox search and how we go about uh, utilizing that capability. So if we go under mail control uh, and discovery, um, this is where we'll do e-discovery and multi-mailbox search. Now one thing that trips a lot of people up is they'll go in and say, uh, you know, I've logged in as a, a global administrator, for example, but I do not see this e-discovery uh, item here. Well, that's because by default, no one has uh, discovery uh, rights within the system, even global admins. So if you don't see discovery show up here to do multi-mailbox search, you're going to have to go over to roles and auditing. You'll see administrator roles, and you'll see this discovery management role. So this is the role you need to assign to allow users to do multi-mailbox search. So if we go in and click on details here, you'll see here members of this management role group can perform searches of mailboxes in the organization for data that meets specific criteria. I need to go in and get uh, the specific members access to that discovery management role. So that can be administrators, that can be other people that are just dedicated to you know, doing e-discovery searches and things like that. I can just give them that role and maybe not give them other roles on the system. So once um, I've been assigned that role, again, I can go back into mail control, and then I'll see this discovery um, uh, icon show up here to allow me to do multi-mailbox search. So I can go in here and select new to create a new search. Um, you can see here I've already created a search, um, so uh, let's walk through that one. So I'm going to select that, go into details. So the first thing I'm going to provide is the keywords that I want to search on. In this case, I'm doing a very simple one. I'm going to search uh, across all my mailboxes for um, the, the, the keyword Woodgrove. But you see here I can get, uh, the, I can make these more complex. So I can uh, search uh, up to a hundred different words. I can separate them with ands, ors, and nots. I can use double quotes to find multi-word phrases. I can use asterisks for wildcard searches. Lots of capabilities here, more information here, and in the learn more link. Um, I can also search across different message types. So uh, by default, I'm just searching across email, but I can also choose to search across meetings, tasks, notes, documents, journals, contacts, IM conversations, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, I can also choose specific uh, messages um, to or from uh, specific email addresses or, or, or uh, email domains. So I can go in here and say, I want to only find um, items uh, that are from, again, a specific user or a domain. I could go in and say at company.com or I could say joe at company.com. I could separate multiple items uh, with a comma, again, from or to uh, email addresses. Um, I can also choose a date range. So by default here, I uh, won't limit the search date range, but I could also go in and search just um, across a specific date range as well. Uh, mailboxes to search. So by default, I could search across all the mailboxes. That's what we'll do here, but I could also go in and, and specifically search uh, across certain mailboxes. 
And finally, I need to go in and give a name to my search. In this case, I'll just call it Woodgrove, just like the keyword I'm searching for. Uh, and then as far as the results, I can just estimate the search results. So that will just give me back uh, uh, statistics about the results that are returned. doesn't actually copy those results into a destination mailbox. Or I can actually copy the uh, search results to a destination, destination mailbox by selecting this option. And I have some options here about uh, enabling or disabling deduplication. Again, more information here about that. Enabling or disabling logging, more information here. And then I can select a mailbox where I want to store the search results to. Now by default, a discovery search mailbox gets created. So I can store um, search results there. I also can go in and create additional mailboxes via PowerShell um, and um, store the results there as well. And then finally, I can also have it send me an email when the search is done. So if I'm doing a complex search across a number of mailboxes, it may take uh, a period of time to do that. I can have it send me an email when that search is done. Okay, so that's some of the options available. Again, here's this search I've done ahead of time. It can take a few minutes to do a search. Again, up to you know more time if it's really complex across a number of mailboxes. But uh, so I won't actually perform the search here. But here's the search criteria that we just looked at that I performed recently um, that was succeeded recently tells me a little bit of information about the date it was performed, the size of the results, the number of items that are found. Again, I had it um, copy the results into this discovery search mailbox, this default mailbox that's available. So I could preview the results here or I could actually open that discovery search mailbox and view the results. So if I click open here, it's going to open that default discovery search mailbox in Outlook web app, which is what we're looking at here. It actually creates the search uh, results under a folder um, with the name that we gave it, Woodgrove. So here I see then all of the different uh, hits that I got on um, the search across all these different mailboxes. And I can drill into a mailbox, I can look at um, the results. Uh, again, here under Amy Alberts, I see that I got um, some hits under her primary mailbox, a hit under the inbox, and then I can see a couple of the, uh, of the hits that I got within her inbox for that search term of Woodgrove. And again, I could drill into all the different results that I got here across my organization. So one other capability that I can do here is actually then export those results to a PST file. Very common thing that people would like to do. The way you actually do that is attach the Outlook desktop client to that discovery search mailbox and then I would do an export to PST. So for more great information on uh, multi-mailbox search and the capabilities um, within this screen that we're in, if we go up and click on the help icon here uh, is a good way to get to details about this whole discovery tab and all the capabilities within it. We see here a quick link to create a new multi-mailbox search. Lots of great help, online help, um, basically walks through what I just walked you through with more detail about all the different um, features and capabilities and search criteria that are available. Um, I can also get uh, more information. Um, for example, I just talked about how do I export this multi-mailbox search to a PST file. Got some good links there talks through the process of connecting your Outlook desktop client and then exporting to a PST file. And more information as well about different capabilities of the multi-mailbox search uh, and the features contained within it. So anyway, um, just that was just a quick walk through. Uh, again, looking at the archiving capabilities, personal archive, uh, multi-mailbox search, legal hold. Um, just wanted to walk you through that and give you a quick uh, tutorial on the capabilities within Office 365. So I hope that was helpful and thanks for watching.